All right, thank you guys for joining me here here on another Christmas Hell. Uh, brought to you by TVSI. Um, I'm gonna tackle for this time. I tackle John Tyler Christopher. If you haven't seen his work, uh, you must not be going to your comic shops because he has been loading up our shelves these days with tons and tons of uh, different types of variants, and we'll talk about some of those. Uh, we won't talk about all of them. Hopefully, you read my articles on Fisherman's Tale and CBSI, and you see some of them there. So let's just jump right in. He first got to start uh, actually doing some role-playing games and different things, and then he did the covers for Witchblade. Uh, Witch, Witchblade 129 was his first cover. He actually did a Wizard World variant as, as well from there. You can see both of those there, uh, followed up by 130 and 131. You can sort of see the sort of his style and sort of his look that sort of I'm – I'm learning how to do this. I'm almost like Savelskri, but I'm going to develop my own style as I go through this. Uh, here's some of his other covers. He did a ton during this run from about 2009 to maybe 2013. Um, you can see some of them there. He did lots of different covers. He also did something for what's called Artifacts. Uh, you can see there you're starting to go, wait a minute. He's starting to get this style and this look to some of it. I love this cover here, uh, 171. Reminds me of the Janet Jackson uh, was it uh, album that came out. Uh, some of these covers are just great. If you can't see, you can see sort of a steampunk look. There's a couple of them. One looks like it's a movie, movie cover. Um, he was playing around with different styles, and you'll start to see that come out later in his career. So uh, he was definitely. But the reason you care about Witchblade, if you don't already care about Witchblade, is for this cover here, uh, 161. Gorgeous cover. Um, starting to do this negative space sort of look, and it's just awesome and fantastic. Uh, later on, he was also work, started working for Marvel. He did a short little DC run, and you'll see it in my article. I didn't put any pictures in for Voodoo. Uh, I actually picked those up on the regular. Uh, but this is Solo. Um, great covers. Uh, that The one with the web, I pick up a lot. A lot of times I look and I stop and go, wait, I know that guy. Who is that guy? Uh, I think he looks a little, does a little like the Dotson type of cut style and a little bit of the Adam Hughes if you cross the two. It's sort of what I think when I see him. Uh, he also did Annihilator's Earthfall. Some great covers there. You see a great Beta Ray Bill cover. You see great uh, Adam Warlock covers there. And it's, it's sort of a great just sort of mix of the ending up, the, the sort of the end of the um, Annihilation run. Adam Lanning just did such a great job with that entire series of Conquest and the regular one. He also, at the same time, was working on Dark Avengers. So he was work, finishing up his Witchblade run, working on Avengers Solo, working on Annihilator's Earthfall, and Dark Avengers. I mean, he didn't do it for long. He did 10, 12, 15 covers at a time. But you, that's a lot of covers. And he was getting burned out. And his, his wife was telling him he had to stop. And then Marvel gave him a call. And sort of said, hey, got something for you. Uh, and it was pretty cool. And... Hey, we got these Star Wars variants. Can you try to do some of these Star Wars variants for us? So he, he pumped out over a couple of weeks. And then this is from an interview I, I watched with him. Um, and he pumped out Luke. And he pumped out um, Han. He pumped out Chewie and C-3PO. And, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, he's done 100 of them. In fact, if you look on the left there, you see the Star Wars action figure variant covers. He's going to have an entire comic dedicated just to his covers. Uh, I bought a few of these. I wish I had gotten that Han Solo when it came out. That was the one that sort of slipped, slipped by and people didn't realize. And it's a $20 book right now. The Luke Skywalker is maybe 8 to 10 You That still pops up on, on the regular. I've never seen the Han pop up. I haven't tried eBay or anything like that, but I've never seen it in a store, in a back issue bin or anywhere. And, of course, you've never seen the Boba Fett. The Boba Fett is actually a variant. Um, well, they're all variants, but uh, issue 4 came out, and issue 4 had Chewie. That was the main action figure, and then... I'm not sure if it was a ratio or what it was, but Boba Fett uh, was the other option. Um, then you see Darth Vader came out with the first Darth Vader. Lando came out with the first Lando. Leia came out with the first Leia. Uh, Yoda came out in issue 20. And then uh, Emperor Palpatine came out in issue 50. Guys, there, there's 100 or so. You can see them all there on the cover. I put a lot of the different pictures. I put them in to uh, my article. I didn't want to put them all here and just sort of bore you with hundreds and hundreds of Star Wars figures. Uh, but I will show you a couple of more. Of these two. These two are the ones I want to track down. I thought this was coming out in the stores, the Rancor. It was issue 73. They finished with 75 before they started over. And I wanted this issue, and I have not seen it. I, I think it must have been an exclusive or some sort. And I just haven't been able to track it down. Uh, but I think it's a gorgeous idea. Maybe it was just a, hey, we're going to come off it, and he never actually did. Uh, the Jabba was issue 51. Uh, once again, I haven't seen that. 
that's just a great cover. I actually ha have beside me here as I'm writing this article and talking is a Jabba um, action figure. And then you get to see a couple more. He didn't just do Star Wars uh, action figures. He did his own like everyone else. It seemed like every artist that ever had an inkling to do Star Wars got to do a cover for issue one. There's so many variants. In fact, he did two. He did break out the uh, the rabbit, green alien rabbit uh, from, I think it's Star Wars 8, his first appearance there. But you get to see him on the cover there. And I do sort of like this up in the right-hand corner, this Wizard World, uh, Wonder World comics variant where it's like you crack open the box and there's your three Rogue One characters. And that's sort of a cool thing. Uh, you probably saw me skip by uh, these issues here, I, these were actually done when he was getting burned out. So these are some gorgeous covers, and I, I, you have to stop and you have to pause and talk about them. That Venom number nine, gorgeous cover. Um, it's a regular cover. It's a and it's an easy ten to dollar issue. I think it should be a, worth more than that. It's because I love the Remender run of Venom. It's such a good. I mean, if Tate's, it's everyone's favorite right now. Remender was everyone's favorite then. If if he just had the ability to, to get on Twitter and tweet like Tate's does. I think uh, Remender's run would just be as loved. Uh, a lot of this Agent Venom, I guess some people don't like Agent Venom. I love it. I think Agent Venom is really cool. That Thunderbolt variant is a $500 book. I mean, you can find it cheaper, but it's an expensive 1 for 50 variant that no one got. Because who's going to buy issue 22 of Thunderbolts 50 times at a, as a storehouse? Well, very few people. Uh, that Thor is from Newberry Comics. Uh, it's actually Jane Foster Thor. The first issue. So, I mean... $15, $20, maybe even more. It's a great cover. Uh, that Cap is a Deadpool. You know, he already popped into the scenes of different uh, Cap covers. Uh, that's when he's the punching Hitler, the classic Captain America cover. Uh, that's an amazing Spider-Man uh, 679.1 uh, that you can see he's playing around with the negative space again. Uh, playing around with that. I didn't realize that was his cover. I mean, I have it because I collect everything Spider-Man, but that's pretty cool. These are Hastings, the Spider-Gwen and Silk connecting covers. Hastings covers. Hastings covers are slowly becoming a little bit more sought after just because Hastings closed. They're not around anymore, so you might not find some of these different covers as easily. This Avengers Arena, AA, if you've ever seen these books, uh, this is just a cool cover. Um, it's Iron Man craw crawling out of uh, the poster. It reminds me of M.C. Escher, if you know M.C. Escher. And then, of course, you get a great Women of Marvel uh uh, the square box variants, uh, great covers. I did not, I have it. I did not know it was a JPC cover, so that's really cool. Um, not only was he doing Star Wars, he was also doing action figures. Uh, you sort of go, man, why does he do so many? I mean, it's, it, I don't think you can go a week without probably finding two, maybe three John Tyler Christopher covers sitting on the shelf. Uh, especially, maybe, maybe right now because of the pandemic, but. Uh, it felt like there for a while, every time you went to a store, there was at least one variant, especially if there's a new number one issue. But if you look at some of these, you go, man, that's a that's pretty cool. I, I fell in love with these covers because of the Secret Wars one. I mean, I'm sitting here, and my other, right here beside me is my Spider-Man from that box, If I whenever it was bought. Uh, I even have fishing lines still tied around his wrist when I used to play with him when I was little. Uh, but one of the things in the interview that I watched that, that he talked about was, that Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, when is he ever going to get to draw them? Howard the Duck. It's a Deadpool figment from the Disney series. Um, or X-Men. I mean, think about it. He, he, there's so many different styles while drawing action figures. When you first got started, and he talks about when you first got started as an artist, how he used to just draw characters standing as he learned how to draw them. Then he you get into action poses and everything. But I remember that. I mean, I'm an art teacher. I was an art teacher for a bit. And... But when I first started drawing when I was little, I had all, all these books full of me drawing Spider-Man standing up. Me drawing Wolverine standing up. And then eventually you start trying to trace Jim Lee's X-Men run. Or you try, start trying to check, chase Mark Bagley's Spider-Man and different things like that. Uh, these are Midtown. Uh, I, I wanted to show them to you because this little American flag, these are all connecting covers. But there's Cap Wolf. How awesome is that? I, I want to track down that issue of the rest. I could care less about the rest of them. You, know, you have Nomad, U.S. Agents. You have Steve Rogers. You know, I mean, you have all the different costumes that Cap has worn over the years. Uh, you also have one of those at the back of us. Uh, sort of looks like the back of a Star Wars book or, or one of these little cards that you used to get. And that's sort of a cool. It came out for Vader Down, issue number one. And then you get Tony Stark looking all cool, standing in front of all his hundreds of Iron Man suits. It's pretty cool. 
the real reason, the entire reason I'm doing this entire article is for these, these negative variants. I was lucky enough to score myself a Wolverine. Uh, if you didn't know that ECC came out with their, their half, the C2, C2E2 released, I guess, the first 1500, and they sold out, and this was usually a uh, $150 book. And then the ECC, about a week ago, since they couldn't do the con, released their copy, and they sold it for $25 a piece. So the, all of a sudden, now the market's flooded with 1,500 more of these. I was able to score my, a couple, but you had about 20 minutes online to buy these. And I just happened to be online at 4 in the morning when someone posted it on Facebook that the, these were on sale. And I jumped online and got one. Uh, so it's sort of, sort of cool. I do have the Strike Force, which is a Spider-Woman. Gorgeous cover. I wish I had jumped on the Rogue before it, it climbed into the $50, $60 range. But these are great. There's, a, there's also a Black Panther, and there's a, for Black Panther 1, there's a Civil War 2. Iron Man cover, there's a Champions 1 Miss Marvel cover, they're all just gorgeous if you look at my article, you'll see those pictures as well uh, here's the, the final few covers I want to show you uh, that Moon Knight, looks like a classic old school um, Moon Knight cover, maybe actually sort of looks like a Finch cover um, but it's designed to look old and beat and worn out, but I'm sitting I have it behind me, if I had a video I could show you I have a 9.8 of that it looks like that, that's what it looks like it looks like a beat comic it came out for issue Moon Knight issue 194. It was a I think an IG IG Comics uh, exclusive. Uh, that that absolute carnage is from the comic shop day, local comic shop day. You get Avengers one. That's a I think a one for fifty variant. You, but since it's an issue one, there's like they're like ten dollars, maybe maybe twenty. I love that Immortal Hulk there. It looks like a old school uh, Marvel horror comic. It's sort of sort of cool. So I ran through a lot of comics really fast. And I didn't even show you, if you read my article, you'll see even more comics there. I just tried to select a few to sort of talk about um, just how awesome and how many different styles he does. Um, and just, I've gained a huge respect looking at his stuff. And he's he's the action figure guy. Now he's become the negative comics uh, cover space guy. Uh, just sort of like when you look at these Star Wars covers. But I'm going to collect them. I'm going to track them down. These exclusives are worth something. So if you can find them on the cheap and you can turn around and flip them, then they're worth flipping. But I'm not getting rid of my Wolverine. Even I mean, I got, good, I got it for a good price. But even if it does double in price and triple in price, to it stays at a one fifty dollar, one hundred fifty dollar book. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna hold on to it because it's a great cover. I'm hopefully will never open it. And the fact it's numbered, I'm gonna hold on to it. But I mean, I'm gonna track down these, the Yoda and the Palpatine and the Darth Vader. These are gorgeous covers. And as he comes out with more, if you follow him on Pinterest, or maybe not him, but people pin his stuff, he evidently has lots more Black Widows and different ones that just haven't come out yet. That I don't know if he did for cons, that since the cons have been canceled, they're just not coming out with them or what. But I, I've seen at least three or four other negative variants that haven't come out yet that are, I can find online, um, that I can't see seem to find as far as for sale. But uh, thank you for listening. Uh, once again, this is Fisherman's Tale. Chris Nelms here with CBSI. As always, it's fun. Check us out for all the other stuff that we do. Uh, we're known for the, the first top, top 10. Great thing that Ben Stein does. It's a beautiful thing. And of course, if you're on the site, that's you know that. Uh, but we also have awesome, great content coming out from Tales from the Flip Side. And hopefully you're checking that out as well. So thank you, guys.